Today's video is all about learning how to make a fall charcuterie board. Whether you're new to this or you're an old pro, I promise you will learn something in this video. I'm excited to teach you all about the different products I used. A lot of them were from Trader Joe's. I'm super excited that they finally have all of their fall products out. Um, all about cheese, all the accessories that you need in order to plate and make a super pretty and very elegant fall charcuterie board. Now normally I'm a summer girl at heart, summer could last the entire year and I would be perfectly content. But honestly, this year I'm kind of excited for fall, and I think it may just be because of my recent trip to Trader Joe's. So if you're like me and you've also been inspired by all of the fun items that the grocery store has been putting out, then this board is for you. I'm super excited for this. It's super elegant, but also doesn't take much effort on your part. I'm gonna show you all of my must-have shopping items, how to put the board together, my favorite ingredients and where to place them, and also how to save your cheese board. So if you're wanting to create your very own fall cheese board, first things first, First, we gotta do a little digging around and find some inspiration. I always like to go on Pinterest or browse random pictures on Instagram and see kind of what I'm feeling. Are there certain color palettes that inspire me? Are there different themes or motifs that I really like on the different boards? And from there, you're gonna gain tons of inspiration for your very own board. While you're browsing around, take some notes on your phone. Are there any fun products you see that you wanna try? Is there any produce that you wanna make sure to get and include in your board? See kind of what you're drawn to as far as themes as well. Do you like a more whimsical style or a more elegant style? Whatever that is, screenshot them, save them for later, and that will be your inspiration to start your board. Now, next up, we're gonna make a complete list of everything we'll need for our board. If you're interested in getting the exact ingredients that I have, I'll put a link below to a shopping list that you can grab. That's everything that I used in my board. But if you're kind of wanting to do your own things, there are certain things that I like to include in every single board. First up is our charcuterie element, which is the meat. So if you like salami, sausage, prosciutto, any of that will work for that portion. Next up is our cheese. Make sure that you vary the different flavors and textures of your cheese. For this fall board, I really liked the white, the yellow, and orange cheeses. I tend to be like drawn toward that. But if you're doing like a fun Halloween board, you could even get blue cheese or something that has the blue veins in it to kind of make it look spooky. Another important element in all the boards is fresh produce, especially with all the fun things that are out for the fall season. Make sure to browse your grocery store aisles and kind of see what sticks out to you. I like to include usually fresh fruits and veggies, but for my platter today, I just ended up using fruits. So do whatever your heart desires. Moving right along, you're next gonna wanna pick up some crackers or bread to accompany everything that is gonna go on the board. And then I always like to add some different sweet and savory elements. So typically for me, the sweet is anything like jam, honey, little candies, dried fruit. And then the savory is more pickles, nuts, anything like that to kind of just balance out the flavors of the whole board. Now I know people always say that charcuterie boards can be expensive and yes, they can, but Really, when you think about buying all the ingredients, you're investing in some staples that you can use throughout different boards multiple times. So your cheese is gonna be your most expensive item. It usually ranges from about four to maybe $8 per block of cheese, depending on the quality in the store that you shop at. So aside from the cheese that you're not gonna be able to reuse, you can reuse a lot of the different sides that you buy. So plan on spending about $50 for your board, but again, know that you can reuse those items and make lots of fun boards in the future. Now that we have all of our ingredients, it's time to think about what we're gonna actually place all those ingredients on. Now, purchasing a nice quality charcuterie board is gonna last you a long time. Once again, you can make tons of boards in the future, especially if you choose a board that's kind of neutral and goes with a lot of different colors and holidays. For a four person charcuterie board, I typically recommend about a 14 by 10 board. I'll throw some of my favorites below in the description. I like to shop at Target, World Market, Crate and Barrel, they all have lots of different great options. You'll wanna get some cups or bowls, just kinda tiny ones that 
you can put around your charcuterie board. And this is gonna be for two main items. The first is if you have any liquidy or runny items, this usually includes like jam or honey, or if you have items that will drip juice, so like maybe your pickles or your olives, you'll wanna put those in bowls so that way they don't leak onto your board and get the rest of the ingredients soggy. You can either get metal ones, bamboo, glass bowls, really whatever you want. Another thing I like to have laying around for all the boards that I make are some good quality cheese knives. Now, there are a lot of different types of knives and they can honestly get confusing if you've never used them before or don't really know what to look for. But I made a special guide to help you know exactly what knife goes with which cheese. There are a lot of different kind of knives, so let me explain this a little bit better. There are four main types of cheese knives that you'll run into. A chisel knife, which is used for semi-soft cheese to a semi-hard cheese and it helps either divide the soft cheese or shave down the hard cheese. There's also a knife called the open work blade, and this is used for soft, sticky cheeses like brie or goat cheese, and the holes in the knife actually help prevent the cheese from sticking to the blade. We also have a narrow plane knife, and this is used for semi-hard cheeses like cheddar or manchego, and this is a fairly versatile knife that you can cut either using the long or the short end. And then last up, we have our small spade knife, which is used for hard hard cheeses, so think like Pecorino Romano or Asiago cheese, and the point on the knife actually makes it easier to cut the cheese into little wedges. Spending even under $30 at Amazon can get you a really nice set that you can reuse for all the different boards and all the different holidays that you make them for. So you can check the description for one of my favorite sets. Now, the fun thing about plating your charcuterie board is there aren't really any hard and fast rules. You just kind of get to do what you want, play around, and use your creativity. Like I said, if you want to plate it exactly how I did, go for it. It'll look beautiful. But if you want to plate your own or you have different elements that I may not have, here are some of my favorite tricks for plating your own charcuterie board. First things first, you're going to want to use your large items as your anchor points on your board. Typically that's your cheese, so place them around the board and kind of spread them out so they look nice visually. As you start to lay other ingredient items down, keep in mind that we want different colors and textures next to each other. This is gonna, again, create a really visually appealing board, so as you're laying everything down, just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. We're also gonna wanna add in some height to our board to create just some visual difference between everything. For my board, I went ahead and used the different decorative pumpkins and the bowls just to add a little bit of height. And then finally, once you've placed everything where you want it to go, you think it looks nice, I like to add just a few little dainty items on top just to kind of finish the board off and make it look really special and put together. So this could be either herbs, I actually ended up using figs and my nuts just to kind of fill in the little gaps and the little holes and it makes it look perfect. Now when it comes to serving your cheese or charcuterie board there are a couple tricks to make it taste extra good and that has to do with when you set your cheese out. So cheese tastes best when it's at room temperature meaning you'll want to set it out about 30 minutes or so before you serve it to your guests. Also if you have any pre-cut cheeses like I did with my cheddar make sure to hold off and cut them at the very last minute. When you cut cheese, it's gonna tend to dry out quicker, so just do that at the very last second if you're gonna make everything else ahead of time. For any unused cheese that you don't end up putting on your board, Go ahead and wrap that in some kind of plastic wrap or a container so it's sealed tight. Usually most hard and firm cheeses will last several weeks in the refrigerator. If you have any fresh ones like cream cheese or mozzarella, those are usually only going to last about 7 to 10 days so make sure to use those up quicker. This board comes together so effortlessly that nobody is ever going to know it hardly took you any time. If you guys end up recreating boards, share them with me, tag me on Instagram, send me a picture, I can't wait to see them.